Okay, we've now connected the machine to our overhead crane. Um, but before we lift it out of the cradle, I just want to talk about a few of the features of the rotor boy. So, as with all of our vacuum lifters, the rotor boy is a battery operated unit. The batteries are actually uh, inside the structure here, and they serve as counterweights as well as the power source. Uh, when it arrives on site, the rotor boy will have been charged in our warehouse before it left us, and it should be uh, suitably charged for a full day's use. But obviously, once you start using it, you need to make sure you put the machine on charge. Um, we normally recommend you put it on charge overnight. Um, you can't overcharge this machine, so don't worry about putting it on Friday night on charge and leave it till Monday morning. Uh, it will not harm the machine. To charge it, on the front here, you've got a cable box. Open it up, and you've got a standard 110 volt plug. This machine obviously needs a 110 volt supply. Okay, so uh, when it's connected to the power, by the way, this yellow light, this LED, will illuminate to say that it's getting charge. So don't forget to put it into the cycle of uh, using it and then put it on charge overnight so it's available for use the following day. A few other things we've got here. We've got the main on-off switch. We'll switch on shortly. You've got the voltmeter, indicates the state of the battery. Now, the rotor boy is a 24-volt uh, machine. So when that's switched on, and I'll show you later, this will register around about 24 to 24 and a half volts. It will never indicate the full scale. It won't go much above 24 and a half or 25 if you're lucky. And as you're using the machine, uh, because the battery powers not just the suction, but it powers the hydraulic turning, as you use the machine, that voltmeter will, will gradually move down the scale to around about 24, maybe 23 and a half volts. But if you get into the cycle of charging it every night, then you should be fine. You've also got on the side here, you notice on top you've got a set of a control pendant showing some uh, of the control buttons, but also on the front of the machine you've got a secondary set of buttons here. Now that's in case you have a problem with the control pendant and you crush the cable, and to change that uh, you just need to, and they will show you, you just need to disconnect this plug here, so push the lever backwards, pull the plug out, reinsert the alternative plug there and that will mean that these buttons now on the front of the machine are active and the control pendant is redundant but we're going to put that back now to the control pendant we do that because we've had occasion where people have crushed the wire on the control pendant and rather than waiting around for the machine to be repaired or replaced we have this alternative set of buttons on the front also on the front of the machine you've got the vacuum gauge that will indicate and i'll talk that through later You've got a water separator here. Now, you, know, you can with a rotor boy, as with most of our lifters, you can lift wet panels, you can operate in wet conditions, but you need to keep your eye on the water trap because any water in the system will get uh, sucked through and accumulate in that water trap. And what you do with that, on a, after you've had a, a session of uh, lifting in wet conditions, you switch the machine off and then simply drain this by unscrewing the black screw here let the water drain out of the uh, separator, then reinsert the black screw and tighten it. But please be careful because it's a plastic thread in a brass housing and it's all too easy to cross thread. Uh, so please take care there and don't over tighten that. Okay, down the top here you've got also a green and a red indicator light which will uh, come into its own shortly and there's also an audible warning sound. Okay, so another just a quick word about the suction pads. For most of the suction pads that come to site with our machines, the seals are interchangeable. This seal is just uh, in, the, in a compress into a groove around the aluminium pad, and the machine will come to site with a set of spare seals. The only exception would be the pads that we use for the Stedman panels, which are a factory fit. But most uh, suction pads have interchangeable seals, and there are separate videos that explain how to change those seals. But again, to reiterate, if you look after those seals and make sure they don't touch anything apart from the panel surface, and also you store the machine in this condition with the pads off the ground, you should not need to change those seals at all. Okay, so we're just going to now uh, lift the machine out of its cradle and we'll then switch it on. So you need to remove the clips and the pins, those sides there. Okay, and the machine is now free for us to hoist up. So we're just going to hoist it up 
clear the cradle. Okay. So if we're now ready to start uh, using the machine, the first thing you do is switch the power switch on right here. But at the same time as you switch it on, at the same time, or a second or two later, press the two red buttons on the control. If you don't press those two buttons, the machine will just continue to run and run and run. Because effectively, the two red buttons are going to control and close a valve in the machine. If you don't close that valve, it will just suck air all day. So I'm going to switch the machine on. And I'll ask Neil to delay until I switched it on. And now we're going to press the two red buttons. Okay. As those buttons are pressed, you may hear a valve closing the machine. So now what's happening is the vacuum pumps are running and it's emptying the vacuum reservoir on the machine. Now that could take anything to 10, 15 or even 20 seconds. Okay, so the red light went out there and the audible warner went out, but you can still hear the vacuum pump running, although you'll notice that the green suction lights come on. So the vacuum pump running, that's going to run at different stages throughout the day at any time. The vacuum pump is designed to, um, it is controlled in such a way that it kicks in and out as it needs to top vacuum levels up. So don't worry about the sound of the vacuum pump running. It's the red light and the audible warning you need to worry about. So the machine switched on. Just quickly, I'll show you here. Now it's illuminated, the vacuum gauge is illuminated rather. No, sorry, the voltmeter is illuminated. You can see that's sitting at just around 26 volts. That indicates quite a healthy battery, but as I explained, don't expect that to go any higher than that. And as you work with the machine throughout the day, it will gradually work down the scale slightly to 24 or just below 24 volts. Okay, now, first thing you do, obviously the machine's uh, connected to the crane, it's out of its cradle, but the suction pads are the wrong way around. So we need to rotate the suction pads. And again, we've got buttons on here. We've got... Neil's just pressing the button, and the same shot you can see the pads rotating. Okay, and we'll do that again. We can rotate them back again. Just press and hold the button, and you'll see the pads just rotate around. Don't keep pressing and taking your finger off the button. Keep your finger on the button until the pads are fully rotated. Do it once more. Okay, so now the pads are facing down. We're ready to put the, the machine onto the panel. So we'll just stop this video and we'll restart when we've got the machine close to the panel.